G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna chat about noise in your wildlife images. I'm gonna explain what noise is, what causes it, how to reduce it in the field, and how to remove it in post-processing. In layman's terms, noise is the grain that you see in an image. This noise can often lead to lower image quality. Let's take a close look at this yellow-throated scrub wren. Can you see all of the grain in the background? Can you see how it impacts the quality of the image? Ideally what we want to avoid is images that just have too much noise and it distracts the viewer from the bird. How much is too much noise? Well, if it's noticeably visible and off-putting, then I'd say it's too much. But luckily for us, we can actually reduce a lot of this noise in post-processing with noise reduction software. So noise isn't as big of a problem as a lot of people think it is. I know a lot of people have issues with noise and that's why I'm making this video. But I just want to assure you, by the end of this video, you should be very comfortable with knowing how to deal with noise and how to remove it. And hopefully it's not an issue for you moving forward. So all images will have an amount of noise in them and that's perfectly fine. You don't have to have a noise-free image for it to be good. So I'm sure you've probably noticed noise in your images and you've probably wondered why some images have more noise than others. And why is that? So to answer that question, the four main factors that influence noise is your light, is your ISO and your exposure, the type of camera you're using, and how much you crop an image. Let's look at those four things in more detail. All right, let's chat about light. I actually think the brightness of the scene you're about to photograph ultimately dictates how much noise you have. That is, the darker the scene, the less light you have available, and that will lead to more noise. It's a really important concept that you have to understand is that whenever you're about to take a photo, you only have a certain amount of light available to take that photo. So if you're in a dark rainforest, you're not gonna have a lot of light. And without sufficient light, you generally need to bump up your ISO just to get some shutter speed and that will introduce noise. If you're in a really bright scene, such as at the beach, you have abundant light, so you're able to use really high shutter speeds and low ISO. So it's this brightness of the scene which ultimately dictates the camera settings that you can use. I'm talking about your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. There's a thing called light value, which assigns a number to how much light you have available. And it goes on a scale from five to 16. Five being really dark and 16 being really bright. Every photo you take will go between that five or the 16. This light value dictates the settings that you can use. So let's have a look at this diagram I've created. This relates to the probability of getting noise in your images. Let's start on the left you're most likely to get noise in your images when you have a very dark scene, such as in the rainforest or with heavy cloud. These scenarios typically have a light value of between five and nine, which means you will likely be using very high ISOs, such as 3200 to say even 12,800. It's almost impossible to avoid noise in these situations, and the amount will vary depending on some factors that I'll discuss in this video. Here is an example of an image taken in this scenario. It's a satin bowbird taken with a light value of 5.33, which is very low. I actually ended up using a very low shutter speed of 1 40th of a second, which gave me an ISO of 3200. If we have a look at 100% crop of the raw image, you can see how much noise is in this image. It's actually not that bad. And after processing, you can't really even notice it. I really should have upped the ISO here to 6400 to give me a shutter speed of 1 80th of a second. You'll find with these dark scenes is you're going to be, it's going to be a balance between shutter speed and ISO and you will have to make that decision. So if you have lower shutter speeds, you're going to have less noise because your ISO can be lower. But if you want higher shutter speeds, you're going to have a little bit more noise. But it really is a balance, isn't it? Let's look at the diagram again. And in the middle, the medium chance of getting noise, this is kind of the light value between 9 and 13. And you're using ISOs generally between 800 and 3200. So noise is visible, but it's definitely manageable and not really an issue. So here's an example of a black swan. Even though we did actually have a little bit of sunlight, the bird is black or dark, the background was slightly dark, and this has caused us to have a slightly lower light value of 11.67. So I actually took this at an ISO of 1600. And when we look at the raw file, the noise is barely noticeable. So at these light values, it's not really an issue. So on the right hand side, when you've got a bright scene and you're using ISOs as low as 200 to 800, noise really isn't an issue. And this is when you've got direct sunlight. 
you've basically got ample light to get your shutter speeds in a low ISO. Here's an image of a white-faced heron. This has a light value of 14.67, so very high, and I actually used an ISO as low as 200. As you can see from the 100% crop, there's literally very little noise. So pretty easily, if you look at that diagram and you shoot in the sort of medium and bright areas, you're never really gonna have much of an issue with noise. It's only when you're shooting in a dark scene that you're gonna have issues, and you probably knew that already. So, you know, sometimes you don't have a choice. If you're in a rainforest, you're in a rainforest, but other times, you know, you do have a choice. I often shoot in natural light or when the sun's out because it gives me enough light to take the images that I wanna take. And maybe that's an option for you if you're having issues with your noise. That brings us to a very interesting tip I have for you, and that is the darker that your background is, the more noise there'll be. So if you're taking a photo, just be aware of the color of your background. If you can have a lighter colored background, it will result in less noise. Here's an image of a white-faced heron. As you can see, the majority of the image is quite dark, and it does have quite a bit of noise. But at the bottom of the image, you can see this sort of blue water, and it's quite a bit brighter. If we zoom in on the dark part and this bright part, you can see that there's a difference in noise. This is the same exposure, the same camera, the same photo, but different noise levels depending on the color of the background. So you can use this to your advantage if you're doing setups or you can control your environment. Being aware of the color or brightness of your background can help you to reduce the noise. And I do this with my setups. You'll see in a lot of my photos, the background is quite light and that's so that I can have less noise. And you can see in this image here of these wood swallows, We've got very little noise in this bright background. Okay, it's time to chat about your ISO setting and how that impacts noise. You've probably heard me use the term ISO numerous times in all my videos. And if you don't quite understand what it is, I'm gonna try and explain it to you. You could Google ISO, but you'll get some technical explanation. I'm gonna try and make it as simple as possible. Your ISO setting basically increases the brightness of the image that you see on the back of your screen. By increasing your ISO, the camera needs less light to expose the photo. So a high ISO means that your scene will be brighter. It's that simple. Let's have a look at the back of the camera so I can show you this in action. Okay, let's see how ISO impacts the amount of light that the camera needs to expose a photo. So on the back of the camera at the moment, we've got a shutter speed of 50th of a second. So I'm actually set up for video, so it's quite low. And we've got the base ISO of 100, so the highest quality we can possibly get. So I'm currently filming just a bush scene and with these settings, it gives us a light value of about 9.33. So sort of about a medium darkness. It's actually pretty foggy at the moment. So we are lacking direct sunlight. Now let's say I wanted to shoot birds and I wanted this um, shutter speed to go up to 800th of a second. So, so at 800th of a second, we're gonna be able to freeze the action and get nice sharp shots. So if I adjust that, if I think, all right, I just wanna update the shutter speed. So if I take this, look what's happening to the histogram and how dark the scene is becoming. So if I take this all the way to 800th of a second, the scene is almost completely black. And if I was to take a photo, that's what we would get. It would be heavily underexposed and we obviously couldn't see anything. And that's not what we want. So for us to be able to get a brighter scene, we wanna up our ISO. So by upping that ISO, the camera needs less light to expose the photo. So if I go up to 200, let's see what happens. Okay, so it's a touch brighter, but not a lot. So we need to keep upping this ISO. Okay, it's getting brighter. It's getting brighter still. And all right, at ISO 1600, this brings us back to the same brightness we had before. So two different lots of settings, but exactly the same exposure or brightness. So at these settings, I could quite easily take a photo of a bird, 800 of a second in ISO 1600. So as you can see, as we up that ISO, camera needs less light and it obviously brightens the scene. If we were to continue pushing that ISO up, you can see how the screen just continues to get brighter and brighter. I think that demonstration easily showed you that by increasing your ISO, you're brightening the screen. I've got another diagram here which shows you how when you increase your ISO, you can increase your shutter speed. And as you can see at a base of 100, we had a shutter speed of 1 25th of a second. And as you increase your ISO by a stop, so 100 to 200, you increase your shutter speed by a stop from 1 25th to 1 250th, and so on and so on and so on. And that's basically all your ISO is doing. It's just giving you a brighter scene and giving you more light to play with. And this is a really important relationship when it comes to setting exposure for wildlife. If you increase your ISO, you get higher shutter speeds. It's pretty simple. But there are some trade-offs. 
as you increase your ISO, you're also decreasing your image quality. So you can think of the ISO as an image quality gauge as well. Higher the ISO, lower the quality. When I say lower quality, all I mean is that there's more grain in your images, it's not quite as sharp and lacks feather detail. So you have to have a balance. You can't just put the ISO to its maximum and expect to get good quality shots. There's a trade-off and that is ultimately up to you as to what you're comfortable doing with what ISO setting you're going to. So a very important point I need to make is that the ISO number that you set or the setting does not directly correlate to the amount of noise in your image. I know that's confusing, but have a look at the screen. We've got two images here, both shot at ISO 1600, but one has significantly more noise than the other. And why is that? Shouldn't they be the same? They've both got the same ISO setting. Well, the top image, the noisy one, if you can see that the shutter speed is actually quite a lot higher, it's actually 1 400th of a second. If we have a look at the raw file for that, we can see that it's heavily underexposed. It's actually underexposed by three stops. So it's a lot darker. Now, if we correct that in post, we have to increase the exposure by three stops to bring it to the same brightness level as the previous image. Now, because we've increased it by three stops, we have to increase that ISO by three stops. So it goes 1600, 3200, 6400, 12,800. So to get the correct exposure at 400th of a second, we're actually using an ISO of 12,800. And that explains why there's so much more grain or noise in the image. So if you get your exposure wrong in the camera, if you underexpose your image, you're actually using a much higher ISO once you correct it in post. That's a really important concept to understand. And that makes it even more important to correctly expose your photos. I do this by using the histogram. I did a video on this, you're free to watch. If you push your histogram as far to the right, you're going to be, the ISO that you're going to use is going to be accurate because you're not going to be increasing your exposure in post and introducing more noise. So a lot of people do underexpose their images and when you increase it or, incre or increase the shadows, you start to get all this noise and you're possibly wondering why. And that's generally the case is that when you increase the exposure, you're actually increasing the amount of noise in your images. Your camera is the third thing that's really important and how much noise you're going to create. Not all cameras are created equal. The newer cameras have much better sensors for high ISO handling capabilities. So the latest 1DX Mark III or some of the Sonys and Nikons, you can push that ISO up pretty high before you start seeing noise or Im any image quality issues. So just know that generally full frame cameras will handle noise better than crop bodies or micro four thirds, but the amount of megapixels can also dictate how much noise. Generally, the lower the megapixels, the less noise you're gonna have. I won't try and explain why this is, but just know that the newer cameras are much better. So if you have an older camera or perhaps an older crop body, you're gonna get more noise than these newer cameras. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. And if you are having serious issues with noise, you may have to upgrade your camera. So the fourth thing that impacts noise is how much you crop your images. I actually think this happens more often than not. A lot of images that I see, maybe people will send to me or that I've reviewed, and there's often a lot of noise, but when I look closely, it's often because people have cropped heavily. So if you can imagine if you've got a full frame image and then you crop it significantly, if there's any noise in that image, it's gonna be exaggerated by the crop because you're gonna be closer to it, you've zoomed into it. So the more you crop, the more noise you're gonna have. So if you have a look at this image of a white plumed honey eater, I actually took this at ISO 6400, so pretty, so quite a high ISO because I didn't have that much light. At the full frame shot, you can see a bit of noise, but it's not really an issue. However, if I was to crop in tight for a portrait, you can see how much more noise is now visible. And that's simply because I've cropped it. I haven't changed the amount of noise, it's just the crop. And unfortunately people, you know, if you struggle in the field to get close to a bird, you'll often have a tendency to crop it in post to make up for that. And, and I don't think that's the right way to do it. If you can't get close in the field, I wouldn't use cropping as a way to overcome that. I'd perhaps just leave more space around the bird and give it some habitat. Often those shots can look just as good. I'd rather a wide shot that didn't have terrible image quality as opposed to a heavily cropped one that did. Okay, so I hope you've got a good understanding of what causes noise in your images. I'll just recap them on the screen quickly. That is, a dark scene, a dark background, an underexposed image, high ISO setting, your camera and the amount you crop 
will all influence how much noise you have in your images. So what is the best way to reduce the amount of noise we get in the field? The, probably the most important thing is we want to ensure you have the correct exposure. Use a histogram and expose to the right. By having the correct exposure, you're going to have an accurate ISO and you won't be introducing noise later on. Be aware of the brightness of your background. Try and use brighter scenes than dark scenes if you can. Try to avoid cropping your images too much. You can use slower shutter speeds, which will allow lower ISO settings. And maybe look at upgrading your camera that handles high ISO well if it's an issue for you. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is how you deal with noise and post. So you've got home, you've downloaded your images, you've loaded it up and oh, you've got all this noise and you're not quite sure how to overcome it. Well, thankfully there's a lot of software available to do that. I personally use some software called Topaz Denoise. I did do a long review of this that you're free to watch, but I'll be very quick here and show you how it works. Topaz Denoise is a plugin, so you can use it in Lightroom, Photoshop, or standalone. I generally use it in Photoshop because I like to mask out the bird. Just be careful when you're applying noise reduction not to do it heavily on the bird because it can reduce sharpness and it just looks a bit, it doesn't look the best. So I generally just do noise reduction to the background. I've got the yellow threaded scrub ran I showed earlier open in Photoshop. As you can see, we've got lots of noise. I'll activate the Topaz Denoise plugin and it's opened up the Denoise software and we apply some basic settings on the right hand side. You can see a few sliders. You can see the side by side here. We've got noisy image on the left and we've got the, on the right the image with the noise reduction applied. I can also use a slider and I can drag it from left to right and you can see just how well it's worked. You know, from noise to no noise, it's actually pretty amazing how it works. And even the bird doesn't look too bad in this instance, to be honest. So I'm happy with that. I simply hit apply and it'll apply that noise reduction, it then opens it up as a layer in Photoshop. And now I can choose to mask out the bird if I want, i.e. what that means is so not, if I create a mask, it doesn't apply the noise reduction to the bird. In this case, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but that's the noise reduction applied. It's as simple as that. And then I'll export that and it's done. So that's how quick the noise reduction software works. By using this software, you can definitely help even with really noisy images. You don't have to have this paid software. Lightroom does have built-in noise reduction. It doesn't work quite as well, but it is an option if you don't want to pay for this software. Well, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you learned something today. I hope I was able to explain what noise is and how to remove it and reduce it. I hope it's not as much of a concern for you anymore. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Leave a comment below with any questions you have. I will definitely answer them. I really enjoy the support the channel's getting. I'm looking forward to the next video already. Thank you for watching. Take care and see you later.